Sicily has been a melting pot of civilizations for pretty much all of its history. Due to its strategic spot in the centre of the Mediterranean, being a vital stepping stone between Africa and Italy. This was the case during the early years of civilization in the region, with the island essentially being split into two zones of influences. The portion to the west of the island was dominated by the naval power of Carthage, whilst to the east, the area was under the direct influence of Greek colonies, with the principal Greek colony being located on the tip of this area. This is the history of the great city-state of Syracuse. Syracuse and its surrounding areas have been inhabited since ancient times, as shown by the many villages of the area such as Stentinello, which later gave its name to the unique culture which sprang up on the island had already established a trading relationship with the Mycenaeans, a warlike culture which had taken root in Bronze Age Greece. The people of the Stentinello culture primarily traded cereal food such as wheat and barley. However, they also developed industries of specializing in obsidian, bone and pottery. The fragile network of Bronze Age diplomacy and trade would collapse in the event fittingly called the Bronze Age Collapse which affected many of the great powers of the age, such as Egypt, the Hittites and the Mycenaeans of Greece, who themselves were overpowered by the migrating Dorians, plunging the Greek peninsula into the period known as the Greek Dark Ages, which as it turns out wasn't so dark at all, as we actually know quite a lot about this time frame. Out of this time frame, a few Greeks from the Greek cities of Corinth and Teen, led by the colonizer called Archios, set out from their mother cities in search of new land to set up a colony, eventually arriving in Sicily and founding a city in either 734 or 733 BC. The fledgling city had many names such as Syracosi, Syracosi and Syraco, eventually becoming known as Syracuse. The name probably comes from the name of the nearby marshlands which were called Syraco. Given how quickly Syracuse became an established colony, it is likely that this colonization was a planned event, most likely orchestrated by Archios. Archios laid out how the property would be divided up for the settlers, as well as plans for how the streets of the settlement should be arranged, even going so far as to detail how wide they should be. The central hub of the new city was the small island of Ortigia, a small island just off of mainland Sicily. In the surrounding area, the new Greek colonists found fertile land and a surprisingly positive welcome by the native tribes in the region. As a result of this, the city of Syracuse quickly grew and prospered into a powerful Greek city, for some time being the most powerful Greek city in the Mediterranean. Eventually, the colony itself would have colonies, founding the cities of Acrae in 664 BC, Tasmania in 643, Acrylae and Helleros in the 7th century BC, and finally Camarina in 598 BC. As the founding members of the city, the Gamoroi held power until they were expelled by the Kilicheroi, the lower class of the city. However, this power of the people did not last that long with the Gamoroi returning to power in 485 BC, mainly as a result of help from Jello, the ruler of Jella, a nearby city to Syracuse. Jello himself would move many of the inhabitants of Jella, Camarina and Megara to Syracuse, building the new quarters of Teach and Neopolis outside the walls. Jello continued his building reforms, including a brand new theatre, this theatre resulted in a flourishing cultural life, attracting many from the Greek mainland who began to migrate to this new hub of culture, resulting in Syracuse becoming a dominant power in Sicily. However, as stated before, Syracuse was not the only power in Sicily. The Carthaginians had been occupying the western portion of Sicily for some time now, and the growing power of Syracuse meant that war with the city-state was simply inevitable. In the resulting Battle of Hymera, 
Jello and his allies decisively defeated the Carthaginian forces led by Hamilcar. In celebration of this massive victory, the people of Syracuse erected a temple dedicated to Athena, the Greek goddess of wisdom and warfare, to commemorate the event. With their power secured, Syracuse grew considerably during this time, with its walls encircling an area of 120 hectares in the 5th century. However, this did not stop the people of Syracuse building outside of the walls. With the population under the city's control being around 250,000, with the city itself having a similar population to that of Athens. Gelos's successful reign eventually came to an end, with his brother Hero succeeding him. Thank you for watching and listening. If you like the channel, consider supporting us over at Patreon. All of our sources are listed and linked into the description below. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you've enjoyed. I've been the Ancient History Guy, and as always, I'll be seeing you later.